Next stop, Henovesa, and the first opportunity to see the nesting habits of some of the larger birds found on these islands. The ground nests of the masked booby seem to be everywhere. Once again, the tolerance for human proximity is amazing. The word tame comes to mind, but these animals haven't been tamed. It's really more of an innocence than anything else. They have no history of being harmed by humans, so they show little or no fear of them. So many of these birds have elaborate courtship rituals. The male masked booby brings twigs, pebbles, and other nest building items to the female and lays them at her feet. He's demonstrating his ability to provide for a family. The red-footed booby, so named because, well, that's pretty obvious, is one of a very few webbed-footed species that nest in trees. Henovesa is nothing if not a haven for a huge bird population. It's estimated about a million birds call this tiny island home. The cold water brings so much plankton that you can feed all the sea lions and the yeah. birds and everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they live together, you know, they don't have to fight for food. They may not fight each other for food, but sometimes they fight each other as food. This is one of the areas where we find the shorter owls. The owls prey on this island are the storm petrels and will wait beside their burrows to strike. When an owl is near, the petrels take to the air. Their seemingly random and aimless flight patterns are meant to confuse and distract the owl. Sometimes it works. This time it doesn't, as the owl pulls a petrel from its burrow. By far the largest of the Galapagos Islands is Isabella. We are taking this trip in order to find the Galapagos penguin, which is an, the only penguin species to be found roaming close to the equator. This is the northernmost distribution for any penguin, and it is also the second smallest penguin in the world. Penguins at the equator? The cold Humboldt Ocean current out of the Antarctic normally keeps the waters off the Galapagos cool enough for the penguins and their food source, but... Unfortunately, the Galapagos penguin population is one of the few animals that have been badly hit by the El Nino. El Nino brought warmer ocean currents, driving the fish that penguins feed on deeper or out of the area altogether. And since the food source dwindled... It is estimated that we have less than 500 penguins in the Galapagos. The Galapagos penguin is one of a group called jackass penguins because of the sound of its call. <coughs> and shares its waters with another flightless bird, the cormorant. But here on Fernandina, it's not just the birds that swim underwater. The sea lions can be quite curious. And this octopus has to be content with swimming in the shallows, at least until the next high tide. Punta Espinosa is on the northern end of Fernandina. Its beauty in the afternoon sun can be staggering. But look closely among the rocks and you'll see another sight just as staggering. Marine iguanas, hundreds of them sunning themselves. Not what you'd consider very attractive creatures. Watching them can be both compelling though and a little disconcerting. The marine iguanas feed primarily on algae, on rocks, and in the water. They spit to remove the ocean salt from their system. A little closer to the shoreline, brightly colored Sally Lightfoot crabs crawl across the hardened lava flow. Though they're strong swimmers by the time they're six months old, sea lion pups stay close to their mothers for the first year. The sea lion way of life, however, isn't always as peaceful and serene as this site would indicate. A baby sea lion tests the waters, but with other adults nearby, mom wants to keep her pup close and others away. On the island of Santiago, there's more to learn about the sea lion way of life from the male perspective. 
a way of life that for the most part entails standing guard. The sea lions are very territorial and are challenged often by younger males looking to disrupt their elder's claim. To protect his domain, this male will stake out a position and forego even an occasional swim for food. He'll fight for his area on this beach until he's too weak to fight anymore. When a younger male is able to overthrow him, he'll leave the area and join a bachelor colony, perhaps on another island. Why would this be Darwin's favorite island? Well, he, from all the things, they're, they're tortoises, uh, the land iguanas. And the isolation that helped him to formulate his concepts regarding the origin of the species. Welcoming the group, a sea lion and her pup. A pelican. And a blue-footed booby. The brightly colored male yellow warbler standing in sharp contrast to the black lava that is this island. And throughout the island, we see Galapagos hawks waiting, searching, and perhaps even posing. As every school day has its recess, so too does this Galapagos classroom allow time for recreation. The chilly waters welcome snorkelers, or ocean kayaking for those who prefer being on the water. But perhaps the most fun is had by the crews from the different yachts in the harbor, as they squeeze in a game or two of soccer. Perhaps to prove once and for all, it's not who has the fastest boat that wins, but the quickest feet. When we come back, more beautiful birds of the Galapagos, a 200-year-old post office, and the fascinating courtship dance of the waved albatross.